the season of goodwill. It would be so nice if he got me something sexy, but he won't. He'll have been down the DIY shop as usual, asking them to gift wrap a sack of tiling grout. Glad tidings. How about calling him Noel? That is a great idea, because Noel Edmonds is the spirit of Christmas, isn't he? And frilly undies. I was that embarrassed buying them, I had to say they were for me. The Thin Blue Line, Boxing Day, 8.50 on BBC One. Now on BBC One, in a change to the published programme, friends and relatives of the victims of the Lockerbie disaster unite in Washington, D.C., seven years on, to unveil America's memorial to those who died. Arlington Cemetery is America's national burial ground. It's a special place, a final resting place for heroes. A quarter of a million veterans and their dependents and political leaders who've changed the course of this country are buried here in an incredible 600-acre site across the Potomac River from Washington, D.C. It began as a place for the dead of America's Civil War, the conflict that tore a country apart, but out of which this nation was born. Since then, some of the dead from every war in which the United States has fought are buried here. It's also where President John F. Kennedy was laid to rest, his grave marked by an eternal flame. There's a memorial honoring the seven astronauts killed in the Space Shuttle Challenger. But here now also lies a little piece of Scotland, a simple cairn quarried from Scottish sandstone, a tribute to the 270 people who lost their lives when Flight 103 was blown out of the skies over Lockerbie. This week, almost seven years since the outrage, those whose lives it changed were reunited in this hallowed place, a ceremony to dedicate the cairn brought together the American families and the people of Lockerbie. They first met in grief, but over the years and across the miles have been bonded by friendship. And to lead the tribute, the most powerful man in the world.